L is for lawman, a sheriff or cop. To misdeeds and mischief, they put a full stop. But some of those lawmen were criminals born. In the old Wild West, one of them was Tom Horn. I'm Indy Nidell, and this is the World Dictionary, today featuring Tom Horn. You know when you watch old Western movies, like really good ones, like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and then you look at the three main guys, Clint Eastwood, Lee Van Cleef, and Eli Wallach, and you think, you know, the good guys weren't necessarily so good, and in fact, a lot of the spaghetti Western characters were morally ambiguous. Now, I'm not saying this was the general case in the actual Old West, and there were a lot of moral and deeply religious people there even, but it was in fact the case for lawman Tom Horn. Well, sometimes lawman Tom Horn. He was also a lot of other things and may well have been a dick. Let's take a look. Tom Horn was born in 1860 in northeastern Missouri. His parents were farmers and he was one of 12 children. Now, the day Horn died, the Desert Evening newspaper in Salt Lake City, and let's just assume that it's a paper you can totally trust, reported that he was driven from home by his father in 1874 and that he soon worked as a writer for the Pony Express. It was there that he became a crack shot, and after mastering the Apache language, worked as an interpreter and a scout for the U.S. Army, working with Buffalo Bill in the campaign to capture Geronimo. Can you imagine a more Western movie life than this guy's life so far? Like, like the clean version? Oh, he also killed an officer in the Mexican army in a duel connected with a prostitute. That was the first man he killed, apparently, though he did kill a number of Apache in the Apache Wars. On September 4th, 1886, Tom Horn was there at Geronimo's surrender as an interpreter. After this, now in his mid-twenties, he used the money he'd earned to build a ranch in Arizona. He had 100 head of cattle and 30 horses, but cattle thieves descended on him and robbed him of all of it, leaving him stony broke. This also led to his hatred of thieves, which would one day lead him to becoming a range detective, i.e. killer for hire. After living the vagabond lifestyle for a while, prospecting and rodeoing as one does, or did back then, he later took part in the Pleasant Valley War, which is a cute name for a war, second only to the Cuddly Kitten War. And it was not actually a war, but was a family feud. No one's really certain which side Horn worked for, actually, and he called himself a mediator. He soon began to be suspected of local killings and disappearances, but nothing was proven, even though he took part in the lynching of three suspected cattle rustlers in 1888. Okay, side note here, when I hear the word rustler, I cannot help but think about an album cover from when I was a kid. One of the worst I think I've ever seen, actually. An album by Mylon Lefevre called Love Rustler. Love Rustler, like, like Mylon, who, who's, whose parents called him Mylon, was gonna rustle your love. He's gonna steal it in the night. This guy. Anyhow, because of Horn's tracking abilities, which were pretty legendary, he was hired by the Pinkerton Agency. So I guess technically he, he, he was a dick, since that's what detectives are called, right, Sparty? That, that's what they're called. So he's a dick. Okay. But they made him resign in 1894. He worked over several states for them, based out of the Denver office, and caught a few notorious train robbers and rustlers. He worked undercover as Tom Hale in the Johnson County War which also wasn't actually a war. What it was, was big cattle companies getting together to destroy cattle rustlers. Thing is, a lot of those rustlers were not rustlers, but were just regular old settlers who happened to compete with the big cattle companies for land or water rights or livestock. It was a shady business indeed. According to that bastion of truth, the Desert Evening News, Horn led a band of 80 desperados against the rustlers and local settlers. He was likely involved in the killings of Nate Champion and Nick Ray, two settlers falsely accused of being rustlers. Champion stood up to the big cattle company's practice of claiming all unbranded young cattle, and it cost him his life. It could have cost Tom his life too, since his men were surrounded by the local sheriff and a big posse of irate settlers, and they only got out of it by getting hold of the governor, who got hold of President Benjamin Harrison, yes, the President of the United States got involved, and he called in the U.S. 6th Cavalry, and Horn and his men were rescued. They were not even prosecuted. Horn was suspected of two assassinations of settlers during all that, for which Pinkerton sacked him. One agent writing that the whole agency knew Horn was guilty, but they couldn't let him go to prison while he was in their employ. It would look bad. So after he was out, he continued his rootin' tootin' ways, working as a gun for hire to stop rustlers in the mid-1890s. 
what this actually was, was Horn being hired by the big cattle companies to kill homesteaders, William Lewis and William Powell being of note. Lewis was shot with his hands up after surrendering. Powell was shot while bailing hay in front of his seven-year-old son. That son went crazy when Horn entered the courtroom at trial. In spite of the positive identification, Horn was acquitted as he was for several other such incidents. His backers had a lot of money, and this was still, after all, the wild, wild west. He did hunt down and kill some actual rustlers, too, and some genuine bad guys, though. I just wanted to be clear about that. Horn took time off to serve as a chief packer for a U.S. Army Corps in Cuba during the Spanish-American War, contracting yellow fever and then returning to Wyoming. This was the beginning of the end. Kells Nickel, a local rancher, was a thorn in the side of the local cattleman and had several run-ins with his neighbor, Jim Miller, for bringing sheep into cattle country. On July 18, 1901, Willie Nickel, Kells Nickel's 14-year-old son, was found shot dead. On August 4th, Kells Nickel was shot and wounded, and dozens of his sheep were either shot or beaten to death. Jim Miller and his sons were initially suspected of the crimes and were arrested, but in January 1902, Tom Horn was arrested for the murder of the child. A U.S. deputy marshal had trapped him into a drunken confession during a phony job interview. Horn also talked about how much money he'd received for the older killings of Lewis and Powell, but he'd already been tried for those. Killing is my specialty, and I guess I've got a corner on the market in this section. I have no trouble in collecting my money, for I would kill a man that cheated me out of 10 cents. Wow. According to the paper, once again, Horn told his attorneys that he had been lying in wait for Kells when Willie Nickel happened by. Horn was spotted, and so, in his own words, he killed him to prevent him running to the house and raising a hell of a commotion. Nickel was shot twice in the back from over 300 yards, what Horn called his greatest feat and dirtiest job. He was found guilty October 24, 1902, and sentenced to death by hanging. He was executed November 20th, 1903, and was, oddly enough, one of the few men in the Old West to be hanged using the Julian water-powered gallows, which is a mediocre name for a 90s band, but was a system which effectively made you hang yourself, sparing the need for a hangman. Your weight on the trap door was connected to the plug of a barrel of water, right? So the longer you stood there, the more water left the barrel. Then that moved a counterweight that would pull out the support beam from under the gallows when enough water had left the barrel and down you'd drop. A lot of people, including Geronimo actually, did not believe Horn guilty and thought he was wrongly executed for a drunken confession since there was no real evidence and the sober Horn had said he was only kidding when he confessed. So historians still debate this, though not the fact that he committed, you know, other murders. But was he a dick? Well, that's usually how this show works, actually. Now, in terms of Horn's positive achievements, he was a legendary tracker and scout. He served his country well in wartime. He at least tried to be an honest rancher at one point. Oh, he did bring a bunch of bandits and rustlers to justice. In terms of negative achievements, he also hunted down and killed or disappeared honest settlers claiming them to be rustlers. He took part in at least one lynching. He rode the West as a gun for hire, which sounds cool, but really isn't. Um, the bad outweighs the good there, so I'll give him a negative two on the scale. And as for being a dick, whether or not he killed a 14-year-old by shooting him in the back, he certainly had no qualms about such things, and he did kill other people, people who had committed no offense against him other than being a source of income. So he gets a three on the dick scale. That gives him a 2.5, which does make him a first-class dick. But hey, it's stories like his that make the Old West still popular today. Well, cowpokes, that's all for today. But if you know of anyone else from all of history that belongs in the dictionary, you let us know in the comments. And remember, living people do not count. And hey, please, support us on Patreon so we can continue to make more and more of these mini masterpieces. And on that note, happy trails.